Hello everyone, and welcome to today's tutorial on Blender Shader Nodes. Today, I'll be teaching you how to make these caustic effects that you can see in the background. Now, if you've been on my Twitter account, you would have seen this file on there and the fish. The fish will be a future tutorial. Right now, it's a bit too complicated to fit into one of my current tutorials, but it will be coming sometime soon, hopefully. But for now, we're just going to focus on the caustic effects, which people have been asking about. So, let's get started. First of all, let's have a nice scene like this. Pretty clean. It'll uh, show off the effect quite well. But yeah, to get started, let's make a new material for both the cube and the environment right here. Let's see, it'll be 0 0.001, so let's apply that to all the scenes. And second, what we are going to do is add in a Voronoi texture. This texture will be the basis for the entire effect, so it's very important. Next up, we are going to use an input texture coordinate, or no, input geometry coordinate. We are going to use the position, because that means no matter where something is in space, the texture will be applied the same way. So that means that if we were to do this and copy this cube, anywhere we would put it, the effect would be applied as if it were a light. We are faking the caustics after all, because making real caustics would be very difficult to do. Okay. So next up, what we are going to do is going to scale this texture by 1 on the x and y axes and 0 on the z axis. Because the way caustics work, when they are on the edge of a plane like this, they are stretched. If we were to go like this, they would not be stretched, and that is not what we want. So let's set the uh, scale to about 3 for everything else. 3 or 2, or maybe even 1. Yeah, 1 seems pretty good. And now what we are going to do is to make the glow effect. So to do that, we need to use a color ramp and a very specific method of fall off, which you, if you've watched my tutorials in the past, you would have seen. So the way that we do that is using a math node set to minimum, minimum, and a math node set to logarithm. There we go right there. And for both of these, we want them set to 0.999 on both of those, both the top ones. With the minimum, it could be either one, but I'm just keeping it the same for both. And we want to hook up the uh, color ramp to both the bottom sockets. That's very important. And if we were to move this around a little bit, and then multiply the effect by a good amount, we will see that the effect is working. There we go. We're getting a very interesting fall off effect. Now you want to turn the color ramp so that it's like that. And as we could see, it's looking a bit like caustics at the moment, but we can improve it by a little bit. First of all, we need to organize the nodes right here. So let's put the fall off in this collection or this node group. So let's put that right there. Another thing that we can do to make the fall off even sharper is by plugging in the logarithm into a multiply connected to the uh, color ramp right there. As we could see, just like that, I'll give you a nice good look at it right there. And if we plug that into the multiply and then cancel that, as we could see, it's looking quite a bit like caustics with that very nice light fall off. So if we were to hook this into the principled BSDF node for the emission strength right there, we'll see that nothing is happening because we need to set the color. So the color that I chose for the fishbowl scenario was more of an orangey like this. And I think we need to set this to like 200 or maybe even higher. No, I think that's actually pretty good. But we could set the color to whatever we want, like more of a blue if it's a different lighting style or something like that. And that is close to the final effect, but we need to add in some animation. So to do that, we just add in a vector math add node right there. As we could see, if we move the Z axis, we could see that it animates over time, which is what we want. But to do this procedurally so that we don't have to manually animate it, we put in hashtag frame like that divided by 24. As we could see, it is now animating with every frame. We can make this faster by putting in hashtag frame divided by 12. I think that looks pretty good for caustics. There we go. Now, another thing that we need to do is make it so that the caustics do not show up on the bottom of an object. So if we were to scale this object up and put it over here, we could see that it's affecting the bottom. 
and we do not want that. So how do we fix it? Well, the way that we fix it is fairly, fairly simple. We use the input geometry node once again, just like with that one, and we use the normal output. The normal output will give us like the x, y, and z directions that the faces are oriented in. So we use a separate x, y, z node right there, and let's use the z axis. And as we could see, it's only affecting the top. Now there is a way to do it with the lights, but it doesn't work in cycles. Well, this one does, so I'm just going to be using that method. So if we multiply this, the fall off, by this, we can see that. Boom! It's only affecting the tops of these. So if there, we were to add in a overhang like this, it won't affect the bottom, which is exactly what we want. That is close to the final fact. Let, let's see how it works. Or how it looks. Okay, slight problem. We could see that this is happening. Uh, to fix that, just hit the clamp node right there. And boom, that's all working very good. Yeah, and that's basically the entire effect. If you want, and this is what I did, I put this into a node group by pressing Shift A, group, make group. And now that it's like this, we can apply it to any uh, material just by adding in the node group. Like if I were to add in another cube in here that has a separate material, let's set it to red. Let's see, let's scale it up a little bit just so that we can see what's happening. We could input, if we were to name this node group, let's say caustics2, there we go. We could go in to this one and add in group caustics2. Then we could plug that into the emission strength and we'll have to set the color manually just because that's how it works. And boom, we got the caustics working on this object as well. I'll just add in a subdivision surface so that we can see the uh, so that we could see that the uh, Z falloff works precisely as intended. And yeah, that is basically the entire effect. Let's see, anything else that needs to be covered? I think that is it. Again, once again, uh, this, the fish file, is on my Gumroad page, and there will be a tutorial on how to make the fish move like that in the future. I don't know when exactly. But yeah, if you want to support the channel, be sure to check out my Twitter page, my Gumroad page, there's free and paid stuff on there, my Instagram, that's new, uh, a Patreon is coming once I figure out how to do it, and let's see, anything else? No, I believe that's it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I will see you in the next one.